Well, it's less predictable. Uh, I walk in with an outline of my agenda for the day. I literally call it that. And I write that on the side of the board. I want to cover these topics, and I want to do a few examples. Um, and then I open it up to them immediately. Do you have any questions or topics that you'd like me to cover today as follow-up to what we did last time or last week? Um, and when I get suggestions, they're added to that agenda. So there are different levels of sort of active learning in my class. Um, the simplest is, um, as I'm describing a concept, I'll just pause and ask. Raise your hand if you understand 90% of that or above. Okay, good. Because I'm going to challenge you. It might not be so easy later on. Okay, but that's great if you understand that. Another thing I'll do, um, a little bit more proactive, is I'll stop and I'll say, okay. Ask me a question. Yeah. Um, that R, it's not in the, I don't think it's in the right coordinate. Oh, wait, did you just change it? From the yeah, no, good. persevere. That, that's a good question. Somebody else is going to share that question. There's something troubling you about this term. It's a great question. <laughs> hey, hey, folks, I had a great question for one of your classmates. <laughs> In the past, my uh, lesson plan would call for me to do a little bit of theory and then race through seven examples. Now I pick two or three really good examples that will highlight what I'm trying to convey. And the class will work those examples live. Now we have to take the derivative of these terms right here. That's going to require the product rule, right? <coughs> You go ahead and fill that in for me. Give you a minute. Go ahead and fill that in. Let's see what you get. I'll catch up to you later. So take a minute, and on your own, what I'd like you to do is the first step right here. Velocity analysis <coughs> to find the velocity of point B. I'll give you a minute. show of hands, I either did it or I know how to do it. Okay, excellent. Let me catch up to you then. So step one, we finished that. And the second part of our strategy is to now find the velocity of C starting from B. Now, why did we pick point C? Why did we decide we want to calculate the velocity of C? In fact, do we know anything about the velocity of C to begin with? Well, yeah. it, um, because it rolls without slipping the velocity of C is zero. All right, so this is key. Rolling without slipping means that the velocity of C is exactly zero. It is what we call the instantaneous center of zero velocity. I'll pose the question, and then I'll say, OK, I'd like you to take five minutes and talk to your neighbor to come up with a strategy that will solve this problem. Raise your hand. I get 90% of that or above. All right. Explain to your neighbor why, if you started at point C, you'd get the same result. I still want you to explain to your neighbor why you can start at point C and arrive at the very same result. Okay, so talk it up, please. Convince your neighbor that's right as well. Okay, show of hands. My neighbor convinced me this will work. All right, show of hands. I'm not convinced yet. I'm not convinced yet. Show of hands. All right, okay. I'm just going to let it go. Okay, it'll work. <laughs> okay, it works. If I find that the questions that they're now asking disclose that they need a review of some mathematical concepts to understand the engineering concepts that I'm covering today. Actually, it makes it more fun for me. It's an absolute blast. Um, 
got to think on your feet, um, but it's a lot more fun than walking in with a, uh, a script of what you're going to describe. It's okay that it's quiet. It's okay, you know, if you're not talking. Um, it's okay to walk around the classroom. It's okay to have them work in teams and try an example live in class. Um, it's okay to cover less examples as the vehicle to learning more, to them learning more.